All right, guys, so it has begun. Judgment Day is here. The US economy is just like the Titanic. It looks strong. It looks impressive. But the screws, they're all coming loose. And up ahead is an iceberg. And you know how the story ends. The Federal Reserve has cut rates by a massive 50 basis points. And this is a bombshell because Powell just admitted the truth to everyone. That the iceberg is coming. He hopes to avert the crash by cutting rates by half a percentage point. But history tells us that it might be too late. The damage from higher interest rates over the past two years has already been done. Every time the yield curve disinverts, a recession follows soon after. And this is when the 10-year yield is higher than the two-year, which is already happening. The two-year is at 3.65%, while the long end of the curve, the 10-year, is well above 3.7%. So let's confront the elephant in the room. How long does it take for a recession to come? Because the economy can keep humming along for many more months to come. This also means a market crash probably won't be immediate as well. Asset prices can continue flying up because of Wall Street greed. And what does the data tell us? When the yield curve disinverts, it can take quite a while before the economy enters a recession. From 84 days back in 2001 to as long as 280 days, in the 08 mortgage crisis and the upside for the stock market from this inversion where we are now to a recession is quite limited anywhere from a crash of 14 percent to a gain of 8.2 percent so it kind of pays to be quite careful during this period we must cut through the bs from the federal reserve powell is still trying to talk the economy off a cliff it's really hilarious if you think about it he just cut rates by 50 basis points but the narrative is still about a soft landing. If Powell believed his own tale, he would be eating his own cooking. He would cut by only 25 points, but he went for an emergency cut because that's essentially what just happened. 50 basis points. What message are you trying to send American consumers, the American people, with this unusually large rate cut? I, I would just say that you know, the U.S. economy is in a good place and, and our, our decision today is designed to keep it there. More specifically, the economy is growing at a solid pace. Inflation is coming down closer to our 2% objective over time. And the labor market is, is still in solid shape. So our, our intention is really to maintain the strength that we currently see in the U.S. economy. Now, this seems very convenient, doesn't it? The elections are coming in November and layoffs across the U.S. They are flying to the moon. So it's hard to believe this isn't some political stunt. According to the Fed themselves, the biggest risk is in the labor market. Inflation is high, but they still believe that isn't the problem anymore. They see unemployment as the iceberg in the distance. 12 members of the Federal Reserve are saying unemployment is the real crisis here. Compared to only 3 members voting for inflation as the big risk, we mustn't be under any illusion any longer. The jumbo cut from power is because the underlying economy is weak. He wants to front run the recession. But here's the problem. He also doesn't dare go all the way. It's all about perception control now. The Fed has ruled out going back to a zero interest rate policy. So we will have a much higher neutral rate than 0%. He doesn't want the era of cheap money to return. In other words, when the dust settles, we could see long-term interest rates settle at 2-3%. to And this, of course, has big implications for the US economy, for the stock market, and the national debt. It's important we look at the Fed's dot plot. These are the predictions of where interest rates will settle in the years to come. And so far, they have been quite accurate. In 2024, we can expect interest rates to hit 4.25% to 4.5%. This means another 50 basis points of cuts are coming. The Fed will continue to ease further in November and December. By 2025, rates could come down to around 3.25%. That's another big drop of over 100 basis points. They will continue to make money cheaper and cheaper. But in 2027 and beyond, rates will stabilize. The neutral or baseline rate in the future could be 3%. That might be the flaw going forward into the future. And if that's the case, why is the Fed front-loading the cuts in September? The US economy could be on the brink of collapse. 
and this is a last-ditch effort to prevent a crash. All the Federal Reserve is trying to make the economy look strong, stronger before the elections. Almost immediately, by coincidence, after the announcement Biden took a victory lap, inflation and interest rates are falling while the economy remains strong. Now, this sounds at least a little bit suspicious to me. Remember, everything can change if the economy suddenly collapses. At that point, the Fed will have to slam rates down. But if things continue to hold up, this is the trajectory we are on. Now, a 3% long-term rate sounds good on the surface. It means people won't speculate as much, inflation will be contained, and asset prices will rise at a much slower pace. But I have to challenge that line of thinking here. The big driver of economic growth in the US is now the government. It really isn't a private sector anymore. And here's what we mean. Just in August, the US budget deficit hit $380 billion. And this pushed the 2024 deficit to $1.9 trillion. And we still have a month left to go. US government spending is out of control. If Biden could borrow nearly $2 trillion when Fed funds were at 5.5%, what do you think will happen when rates are dropped down? Trump or Harris will borrow even more. Lower rates will just encourage them to ramp up deficit spending. And this is an absolute disaster. In August, receipts hit $307 billion, an increase of 8% from the previous year in 2023. And this is what the US government takes in. However, their spending or outlays hit $687 billion. That's up by over 250% from August last year. How is this not a problem? The biggest threat to inflation and rising prices isn't the private sector. No matter what the interest rate is, Congress can keep borrowing and spending. Lower rates just makes it even easier. And because long-term rates were settled at 3%, the US debt will continue to spiral out of control. Let's also not forget the big agenda for US manufacturing. Whether it's Harris or Trump, the plan is to reshore every critical industry back to the United States. We will require all essential materials for our national security to be produced here in the United States, creating millions and millions of new manufacturing jobs. You know, when we built the F-35, we have the wings built in one country. We have the tail rudders built in another country. We have the seats built in another country. We have the electronics built in seven different countries. What the hell would we do if there's a war? Now this sounds great, I love it. Bringing manufacturing back to the US sounds awesome. But there's a problem here. The cost of production is so high that prices have to fly up. If everything is made in America, prices can very well double overnight. Plus, the government will have to spend hundreds of billions to lure companies back home. So, can the zombie economy continue limping along? Yes, it can. The Fed rate cut just makes it easier for the life support to continue. Now, history tells us that a recession will come, but that's not 100% guaranteed. Not today when government spending is just so big by itself, that is a game changer. But what's confirmed is massive inequality if a recession doesn't happen. There's just so much money in the system that we can't ignore now. As of end August, nearly $6.3 trillion is sitting in money market funds. $130 billion flowed into the money markets within a single month. And this is just in the US alone. There's still money in Europe and Asia as well on the sidelines. When people put their cash into money markets, they are essentially investing into short-term debt. And this includes US Treasury bills. And they are extremely sensitive to rate cuts. By the end of the year, rates could drop below 4.5% quite easily. So investors in money markets will be getting a lower return. Eventually, they will take their money out and put them back into riskier assets. So there's this big struggle and uncertainty going on. Will the markets crash, then the trillions of dollars come flooding in? Or will we avoid a recession and the money comes in pushing prices even higher? Now, no one knows for sure. The end game is just so murky thanks to government spending. Because that is a form of intervention as well. And if you're thinking of betting on a collapse or reverse crash just based on the rate cards, 
well, things can go either way. You'll just be betting at a casino. Throughout history, 3 to 12 months after the first cut, the market tends to keep going up. The drawdowns we see here are horrific, but they are during periods of a recession. Recessions happen when GDP collapses and unemployment flies to the moon. Now, the better question to ask is if the US government bails out the economy. And when I say bailout, I mean deficit spending. If Trump or Harris continues to borrow money to goose up GDP and hire more federal workers, then the music doesn't stop. The zombie economy will continue to be the living dead. It will hobble along. Asset prices, unfortunately, could continue going up as well. Now, if the market does crash, it will be time to buy hands over fists because inflation still isn't solved. Federal spending will eventually make those on the top richer as well. And what will they do with the money? They buy assets. Referring to previous rate cut cycles, things get pretty clear. If there's no recession, in the next 12 months, the market could rally by an average of 10%. However, if a recession happens, the market might crash by 15% over the same period. And this is the Bitcoin flip here. It all depends on the US consumer now and how much Congress decides to spend. Now, in the long run, 24 months and beyond, 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, the stock market will continue to hit higher and higher. The bias for upside is already there. Inflation isn't going away and deficit spending definitely won't end. Now, keep this in mind. By the end of 2025, rates will likely drop to just under 3.5%. This is going to trigger a lot of hot money looking to chase yield. So the pressure for upside in the stock market is coming. Hang on tight, guys. There are many unresolved crises around the world that demands further money printing. The hot wars aren't even finished yet. But let me know what you think. Will the Fed cuts trigger a recession or will Congress spend their way out of collapse this time? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.